The year is 1984. You and your family are all sitting in the living room just watching TV when your regularly scheduled program gets interrupted by an advertisement introducing the Macintosh. Hi, I'm Mr. Addict, here today as the host for your video on the history of the Mac, a product I am too broke to buy. In 1979, the Macintosh project was conceived by Jeff Raskin. Jeff Raskin, born 9 March 1943 in New York, New York and died 26 February 2005, was an American human computer interface expert. This project would later be redefined by Apple's co-founder Steve Jobs in 1981. At the price of 2495 US money, which today it would be around 7300 US money or around 12401 and 60 cents in New Zealand money, that's how much the Macintosh cost. The first Mac came with applications such as Mac Paint, which made use of the mouse. You'd use that to draw, and MacWrite, which made use of the keyboard, and you'd use it to write. Wow, so amazing. The Macintosh was the first successful mass market all-in-one desktop with a graphical user interface, built-in screen, and mouse. It was pivotal in establishing desktop publishing as a general office function. Sales were going strong and had reached 70,000 units on May 3rd of 1984. For context on what the internet was like during the 80s, as we all know computers use the internet, when the internet first started to connect to computers, it was powered by a network called Usenet, which still relied on phone modems to work. So, the internet wasn't fast at all. When the 90s rolled around, we were introduced to a new age of the internet. In the span of a decade, web pages went from little more than glorified word documents to sites full of vibrant colours, cheesy curses, and excessive animation. And we cannot forget about internet chat rooms now, can we? These started to pop up everywhere. In 1992, Apple released the Macintosh PowerBook Duo 210 which featured 4 megabytes of RAM and an 80 megabyte hard drive in a compact, lightweight, portable case. These devices weighed just 4 pounds, which is 1.81 kilograms, and used docking stations, which allowed the user to have more ports to use. In 1998, Apple introduced the iMac, which had a colourful design, unlike the beige boxes of the time. It introduced USB ports to the Mac and had an emphasis on simplicity. It also had a 4GB hard drive and a tray loading CD-ROM drive. In the 2000s, fast internet was just becoming a thing. When it came to the web, you'd find that most of the web pages were filled with obscure links, pixelated images, and terrible search bars. Chat rooms were becoming very popular. In 2006, Apple introduced the Intel iMac. It was the first Mac to be based on Intel's core Duo processor instead of using PowerPC processors. It had 1GB of RAM and a 250GB hard drive. In 2008, Apple released the MacBook Air, Apple's thinnest and lightest notebook ever, but it lacked a CD drive, which was unusual for the time and only had 
two USB ports, but it also introduced a new gesture-based trackpad that borrowed ideas from the iPhone. Storage capacity was increased to a 128 gigabyte SSD. Of course, over the years, there were tons of different Mac models, more than I have talked about, but we'd be here all day. Today, Apple is using their own ARM processors in the Mac to increase performance and efficiency over their Intel counterparts. They have more Mac users than ever, driving sales up. I hope you enjoy this video and I am not your usual host, so I understand none of this computer stuff. Now if you don't mind, I'm gonna end this video to go off and watch some obscure horror movie no one's ever heard about. Thanks for watching, remember to like, share this video with your friends, comment, subscribe and join our Patreon for exclusive behind the scenes content.